I think I'm gonna go to Sprouts today and see if I can't snag a bag of the Four Sigmatic Perform Coffee. It's sold out online, but I did pick up a bag of the Chameleon Organic Ground Guatemalan. This is a really good one. And it's it's been on my bottom for like four or five months. You can get, I think a dollar rebate. Yeah, I bought it as a rebate app I use. It's mostly just for my entertainment purposes. I don't get like a ton back, but honestly, sometimes I get it like maybe five dollars back and it, it has added up over the years you guys like i've been doing it <clears throat> oh shoot did i put four scoops in there i've been doing it for so long it really adds up i'll tell you though the places that have the best sprouts <laughs> the stores that have the best deals on ibotta here let me shoot out the dark there the stores that have the best deals on Ibotta are Walmart, oddly enough. They tend to have the most Ibotta rebates and Sprouts. Yeah, Kroger has a few. I would say Walmart and Sprouts winning for sure. Target is kind of similar to Kroger, but you have to be careful with Costco on Ibotta because um, I suggest scanning the code, the barcode in store at Costco because sometimes an item will be on Ibotta and because of the way Costco packages things up, it doesn't end up qualifying for the Ibotta rebate when you have to scan the barcode. It's odd. I've been, I've been hosed on Ibotta with Costco before. Let me know though, I know a lot, <clears throat> but let me know. I know many of you are Ibotta aficionados. So let me know in the comments if you have a workaround for that. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, I have been slacking on Costco. I have not been in a long time. Well, since the last time you and I went there together was the last time I went. The main reason, oh shoot, I forgot to, I forgot to swizzle. The main reason I haven't been going to Costco as much. The main reason I have not been going to Costco as much is not because I don't love Costco. It's that construction. It, it has really just turned into a nightmare and it takes me forever to get to Costco and back, so I've been just going to the Croge. See how the chameleon has a nice color? <sighs> Love it. Speaking of sprouts, they have the best coffee selection. Kroger always has like generic type coffee brands. They don't ha ever have like the really good ones, but the new sprouts that I've been going to, they have really good coffee coffee brands and if you are like me and you love coffee and you have a hard time finding them i highly suggest trade i get that from time to time it's a subscription service this isn't sponsored but i have worked with them in the past but a lot of the coffees that i was getting from trade they now have it they have a, the sprouts which we didn't have before so i'm really glad for that but yeah that is a great way to get really good coffees well hey guys i'm here at kroger i forgot my car mount and so I couldn't chat with you on my way over here. You know, I'm always emphasizing how important lifestyle factors are in terms of managing your stress, how that plays a major role in skin and hair health. Well, when it comes to the health of your hair and dealing with things like hair loss, a lot of people experience scalp pain, trichodynia. That can occur just from touching the scalp or with combing or brushing your hair. And it can occur alongside types of hair loss like telogen effluvium, androgenetic alopecia, but it can occur by itself and it often can occur in people who are undergoing a lot of psychological stress and it's difficult because those patients I find they end up you know conveying these symptoms and there isn't necessarily anything visibly obvious on the scalp and I feel like they feel like they're easily brushed off and not taken seriously, but it is a true symptom. And it has to do with a little compound called substance P, which is a little thing that is released from the nerves that go through your skin and it incites neuroinflammation and that can contribute to pain. Psychological stress can feed into those pathways, aggravating that. And so it's one of those things that goes underdiagnosed and isn't really there's no you know path to work up to get to that diagnosis but if you are dealing with scalp pain discomfort whether it's related to hair loss or not do know you are not alone you know when healthcare providers don't take your symptoms seriously that's frustrating find another doctor honestly because 
it's just critical to the practice of medicine. Patients, of course, have all kinds of symptoms, some of which have zero explanation. But if a patient doesn't feel heard, then you've severed that relationship right away. I mean, it, it, it crumbles. And what ends up, what's frustrating is that patients, I find, will end up having that situation happen where they're not taken seriously. Then they might go to another provider or be referred somewhere else, have the same kind of experience. Well, it's almost, if you're lucky, it three strikes you're out. But earlier than that even, patients give up on, you know, Western medicine. And that's really where an opportunity opens up for people who have something to sell. Because, you know, you feel like you're not being heard, you wanna take matters into your own hands, do something. And I think that it's really a downfall of the current medico industrial complex that we live in where physicians are like oftentimes in these like metric driven practices that it's not their desire, but they're under these like business administrators with these like metrics that are not indicators actually of quality of care. They're more like business metrics. And I really think it is a huge detriment to the doctor patient relationship. I mean, it is, but it's really, it's going, it's having a profound impact on a larger scale because those kinds of things, they don't just impact that individual patient. They have a trickle down effect for generations and generations because when someone has a bad experience with medicine, it's, it's like a stain that's a very much permanent and it becomes difficult to impossible to restore that confidence. And those individuals go on to have children and they, you know, pass down that hesitancy. And it really does have a trickle down generational effect that is detrimental for sure. Wow. Didn't expect to chat with you guys about that here in the Kroger parking lot, but I was just reading up on trichodinia. Uh, and I thought of you guys. Anyways, these earrings, check them out. I think I got a comment. I was wearing them in video recently. They are, I bought them on Amazon. They are another pair of Betsy Johnson earrings. I have been really happy with the Betsy Johnson earrings on Amazon. And these are like, I don't know if you can see, little stones with like a flower. This is like my fourth or third pair of Betsy Johnson earrings. I'm kind of in a springtime get up with these earrings and I'm wearing my lavender barefoot dreams even though it's December, but or actually November, but by the time you guys are watching this, it'll be December, same thing. But it's like, what's the temperature out? 67, is that correct? Feels more like 82. Anyways, I'm gonna head on into the Croge. Ooh, we have some unique holiday sweets on here. The Texas Blonde Pecan Cake. Fruitcake Petites. Holland Street Bakery. I've never heard of that. Must be some local company. Stuffing mix. Homemade peanut brittle. The M&M panettone. Covering it with M&Ms. I feel as though that is an Italian no-no right there. I'm not sure what Usuren is going for here with this intensive repair essential oil bomb. Fragrance free. It has shea butter, sunflower seed oil. So it's pretty good, but I don't know how I feel about the essential oil marketing. That's kind of, I don't know. I don't really see anything in this that speaks to essential oils. This original healing cream, it's a great one for extremely dry skin, but it's very, it's very pasty. It's a little difficult to spread, but it's a great one. And they have the Skin Calming Itch Soothing Cream with dimethicone, colloidal oats. It's a nice hefty tube. Talked about these Gold Bond moisturizers, I think last weekend in Big Lots, the diabetic one. 
appears to be fragrance free. Retinol palmitate is an antioxidant. See, they'll claim it's retinol on a lot of other products, but it doesn't act like retinol. You have to be careful there. It's not a bad ingredient or anything, but it doesn't get into the skin and convert to retinoic acid like retinol can. Shea butter, oat extract, those are good ingredients. Ginger root extracts, probably got humectants, and then hydroxyethyl urea. That's urea, which is a humectant and keratolytic. So this does look like a good dry skin relief cream for diabetics. Diabetics have poor healing, stubborn dry patches related to delayed cell turnover. Now, I haven't seen this eczema relief colloidal oatmeal cream from them either. Is that? It has shea in it, panthenol. This looks promising too. $10.99. I need to go back to my older videos and compare prices on some of these, see how inflation has has hit the body cream market. Oh, this remains a favorite of mine, the Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream, fragrance free. They used to have this overnight hydration one that you could only get at Walmart, but they appear to have discontinued it. The Nourish K-Care Kroger dupes for Cetaphil are a great option significantly less expensive wow that is that's like half price it's palmer's products all have fragrance see fragrance in body moisturizers is not i mean it's probably not an issue for otherwise healthy people who want a scented lotion but for people who have truly dry irritated skin it's not the best idea it just increases the risk of further irritation Kroger's got some promising looking little stocking stuffers here. I was eyeing these adorable barrettes. I like the one with the candy canes. Those are cute. Scunchy. Foamy foot buffer. Is that like a pumice stone slash soapy sponge? These are cute too, the little hair ties. All right, time to crack into the K-Beauty advent calendar. I just need to figure out how I'm gonna position you guys so that you can see because it's not like the little doors typically. I have to pull this out. So we're gonna do, I think I will do day one and two today. And then in tomorrow's vlog, I'll do three, four, and five. Although, spoiler alert, I'm gonna do all five days now, but I'm gonna split the footage into two videos to keep you on the edge of your seat. All right, day one is a pretty big one. All right, what the heck is this? Sika Bubble Sparkling Booster Wash Off. It does have fragrance and it has orange fruit extract. Now that obviously can be irritating in some kind of leave-on product, but this does say wash off. It also has kaolin in it, which can help with oiliness. Let's see what exactly this is. I like the color of the packaging. It's very Christmassy. In the box, you get these little packets. Bubble Sparkling Booster. I have no idea what this is. I think it's just a face wash. Is it the same on both sides? Yeah, it appears to be. I'm, I'm guessing it's a face wash. It does have centella extract, matacasoside, matacasic acid, asiatic acide, asiatic acid. And those compounds from centella, you know, they're anti-inflammatory. They help with healing. They may help in skin barrier recovery. So interesting. All right, that was day one. Bye bye blemish. Vitatox Brightening Bubble Cleanser. Come on out. Some by me. The thing I like about this advent calendar is you actually get full-size products no little sample one and done things this is a cleanser apply a small amount of the product to your face when dry and spread it thinly and evenly like when applying a facial mask 
mask. After the product foams, rub your face using gentle circular motions and a amount of water. Rinse thoroughly with lukewarm water. So this is a cleanser. It says, in case of having side effects such as red rash, swollenness, and or itching while using this cosmetic, or in case such symptoms appear by direct sunlight after using it, consult a dermatologist immediately. Okay, that kind of warning is a little sus. It does have tangerine fruit extract, citrus extract. They're basically saying, if you have phytophotodermatitis from this, talk to your doctor. <laughs> uh, interesting. It's got, um, in addition to all those citrus extracts, which citrus can have furocoumarins in it that react with sunlight, cause a phytophotodermatitis, adverse reactions with sunlight. Uh, what else does this have? It's got panthenol, willow bark extract. Those are going to be anti-inflammatory fragrance. This just looks like a fun way to cleanse your face slash get an irritant dermatitis possibly, but... Uh-oh, uh-oh, what would you do? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> hey guys, I just got out of the shower and I am feeling sing-songy, so watch out. <laughs> Karaoke time. Anyway, my battery died. And whenever the battery dies mid-verbiage, whenever I'm just talking to you and it dies, I get this little message across the screen whenever the battery dies mid-convo. It says, battery exhausted. And it's like... Can you imagine if everyone's life was like battery life where we could just say, hey, exhausted and just disengage? <laughs> oh, adulthood is just prohibits those kinds of things. Anyways, I'm wearing my Romaine Calm and Carrot On shirt. This was a gift from a viewer a few years ago and it's seriously one of the most comfortable t-shirts. That's why I like wearing it to sleep at night because I, and like princess in the pea when it comes to pajama fabrics. If it's rough, non-breathable, forget about it. I can't take it. Speaking of princess in the pea, I have been sleeping like Sleeping Beauty with that weighted blanket, but the fabric that it's made out of is really like almost cooling and smooth on the skin. So I look forward to, to burying myself in that thing tonight. <laughs> What I was telling you guys in, in the parking lot, you know, if your doctor is not taking you seriously, you have symptoms, especially things that, you know, may be a little, what I say, vague, not something that you can pinpoint to, make sure you are heard. They may not have an answer for you. They may not be able to find the cause, but if you don't feel heard by your physician, that is a red flag because Patient history is key to making diagnoses, to helping people, to doing our job is taking a good taking a good patient history, listening to patients. And it's not about just asking a series of questions off of a list like X, Y, and Z in a rapid manner. It's really about letting the patient tell their story. So if you don't feel like you have had the opportunity to tell your story, then, you know, if you don't feel like you're being heard, find another doctor. Gone are the days where people had like that doctor-patient relationship where you had the same doctor forever. I mean, I'm sure many of you actually do have that kind of relationship with your doctor. And I think that's really good. But man, with the whole corporatization of medicine and everything, it's just kind of, it's really gotten in the way a lot of those good patient-doctor relationships which is unfortunate, but anyways, I hope I can encourage you to foster that because it makes a difference, you know? All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this crazy vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.